Hello and welcome back to another episode on Inspiring Hikes, where I'm looking to inspire you to go on a backpacking adventure. In this episode, I will be talking about food. One of the main questions people ask me when I was through hiking or when I tell people that I've through hiked before is they want to know what you ate. And to be honest, when I was through hiking and had a hiker's appetite, I could eat anything and everything I got my hands on. And I still would lose weight. Uh, doing a weekend backpacking trip, you won't quite need as much food as a through hiker. But this is a general idea of what through hikers eat in the woods. Uh, so for breakfast, people will pack granola, uh, fruit and grain bars, little Debbie cakes such as honey buns and whatnot. Uh, Carnation Instant Breakfast is a popular choice on the trail. Uh, during my through hike, I never took the time to cook oatmeal or any type of hot meal. I was always ready to go. Let's just slam a granola bar or eat some fruit and grain bars, drink some coffee, and start hiking. For lunch, a lot of people have tuna, peanut butter, uh, trail mix. My preferred favorite was just pepperoni and crackers. I would buy the nabs, six pack of nabs, and munch out on pepperoni and crackers for lunch. Uh, people eat trail mix. Uh, a lot of people pack tortilla shells. And instead of doing a sandwich, they'll take a tortilla shell, slap peanut butter on it, throw some trail mix, and wrap it up. So you've got a, a tortilla peanut butter sandwich. Uh, and dinner, for the most part, people were trying to save money and living in the woods. So they would eat ramen noodles, instant rice, instant mashed potatoes, uh, anything that was dehydrated and you would add water to it. If you've got extra money and would like to splurge on your dinners, uh, there's brands like Mountain House and things like that where you actually get a flavorful meal dehydrated with some noodles and meat in it that when you get to camp, all you have to do is boil water, mix it in the bag, eat your dinner, and there's a couple of don'ts for food. You Typically don't want to carry cans such as Vienna sausages and things that are heavy in weight. Uh, Vienna sausages or some can of chili beans already has fluid in them. So you've got extra fluid weight in the can. And then you also are stuck with a can that you have to carry out and adds weight to your pack. Uh, you also don't want to bring glass, obviously, because glass is heavy, and it's dangerous. If it breaks in your pack, then you've got glass shards ripping your gear apart. Uh, one other thing you don't want to pack, typically, is cold food. And one way cold food can bend is if I've seen through hikers, or hikers in general, freeze a steak or freeze a pack of hot dogs before they go hiking and they'll pack them the morning of and eat them on the first night of the trail. So if you've got a frozen steak or a frozen pack of hot dogs that thaws out on your first day of hiking, you can obviously cook them that night and have a good, good meal for your first dinner. Uh, so basically, ramen rice and some potatoes, mountain house, peanut butter, tortillas, tuna, I don't know if I mentioned tuna, pepperoni, crackers, granola, trail mix, peanuts. Uh, obviously, you want to pack some candy, some type of comfort food, something that you enjoy. Uh, fruit and grain bars, Little Debbie's, carnation, instant breakfast, and coffee. Uh, I always did instant coffee in the morning with ice cold spring water mixed with a carnation instant breakfast. So I had kind of like an ice cold mocha coffee in the morning. Uh, don'ts, cans, glass, and cold food. You don't want to 
You don't want to really carry your stuff. And although I say you don't don't want to carry your stuff, they have a saying on Appalachian Trail and all the trails and in life, hike your own hike. What works for me may not work for you. And something that I enjoy may seem worthless in your opinion. So like you have to take everything I recommend or suggest with a grain of salt and realize that these are my stories and this is what's worked for me and what I enjoyed. Uh, planning, so when you have food, you obviously need to know how much to carry because if you're going on a three day backpack, you don't want to carry 10 pounds worth of food because when you get to your car after the third day, you still have eight pounds of food that you carried for 20 or 30 miles that did not help your hike. So you obviously want to plan and that's one thing that's included when you rent gear with me was I'll help with the planning process. Uh, in a hypothetical situation, if, if you do a three day backpacking trip and you start on a Friday, well that morning you're gonna drive to the trailhead. So when you're on the road, or at your house, you want to eat a big breakfast. Go ahead and load up with some extra protein, uh, extra carbs, extra calories, because that'll be one less meal you have to pack for. So Friday morning, you show up to the trail and you've already had breakfast. You'll need a lunch and a dinner. So on Friday, you need a lunch and a dinner. Saturday rolls around, you wake up, you have to have breakfast, lunch and a dinner for Saturday. And then on your third day, Sunday, you wake up and you need a breakfast and a lunch. Now, theoretically, Sunday, you don't need to pack a dinner because you'll be returning to your car or a tra trail town, which will have a restaurant. So you'll like, after three days of hiking in the woods, you'd love nothing more than to come into town and have a hot cooked meal at a local restaurant. So on a two night, three day weekend backpacking trip, theoretically you only need to pack two breakfasts, three lunches, and two dinners. So if you buy two mountain house dinners for $10 a piece or $8 a piece, you'll have two dinners there. Two breakfasts, for me, when I was hiking the trail, I would buy a box of granola bars. So there's like six to eight granola bars per box. And if you eat two or three in the morning for breakfast twice, that's two days. So like a box of granolas for breakfast, dinner, a couple mountain houses. And then lunch, you need three lunches. So like three packs of pepperoni, one small jar of peanut butter maybe, or three packs of tuna, uh, some crackers and trail mix. Like you need a couple snacks. You don't want to carry more than one pound of food per day. So that's kind of the rundown on food. Uh, if you rent gear through me, I will be meeting you at the trailhead to deliver the gear the day of your hike. And I will provide a shakedown where I look through your gear and the food you brought to recommend whether you have too much food or not enough. Also, food. People are like, how do you cook your food? So, and like everything on the Appalachian Trail and in life, there's two options or multiple options. Some people will have a jet boil that has a pro miniature propane tank and a flame and a pot, and it can boil water within one minute. Uh, those things are very convenient very fancy, they're a little bit pricey, but they are definitely a little more luxury, luxurious than what I choose to use. Uh, this is what I used for six months on the Appalachian Trail. Uh, while most people do use some type of propane system, a lot of people still are using alcohol stoves. Uh, all it is is a basic titanium pot. This is a Tox pot that I've used for past 
four years plus six months. This is a basic pop can that was modified with holes to create a stove. Now, with each rental will come a container of alcohol. Uh, one thing I like about using a alcohol stove is the ease of access for fuel. Uh, sometimes when I was through hiking, I would come to a gas station and I could buy all the food I needed and the one thing they didn't sell would be propane containers. And like my friends that used the jet boils or anything like that would have to go to an outfitter just to find propane. But every gas station will sell some form of rubbing alcohol or this, which will be in the car section with motor oil and things like that. It's isopropyl heat. Sometimes it comes in a yellow bottle but it is basically rubbing alcohol, a type of fuel. And each kit will come with a little bit of soap just to clean out your pot. Uh, and this is gonna be dangerous to do it in the house, but I'm gonna show you how well this alcohol stove works. So basically you just fill up half an ounce to an ounce, Add you a cup or two of water, light it, and if you'll see, it slowly starts burning in the middle. Then after it heats up, it will actually pull vapors through the little holes. And this method will boil water in about two minutes. Do you see how it up? All sucked around through the small holes on the side. Cup of water. Boom. It's cooking. I mean, that's an alcohol stuff. And you can get a bottle of rubbing alcohol at any gas station for like $2. And it'll last you for weeks. So that's how cooking is done. If you have ramen noodles, you just boil them. Instant mashed potatoes, warm them up. If you've got a mountain house, you just boil your water, pour it in your bag, and eat your dinner. Uh, there's one other benefit I enjoy with alcohol stoves versus propane, is this serves as a dual purpose fire starter. Uh, early on during my through hike, I was stuck on top of Trey Mountain in a snowstorm where seven hikers including myself, could not start the fire. And it dawned on me that I had rubbing alcohol in my tent for my stove. So this is a great way to start a fire, either during a rainstorm, after a rainstorm, or even a snowstorm. So that's what's offered in my rental packages. Every group will, every person will receive this exact cook setup. Basic pot, and a pop can alcohol stove. Well, thanks for watching. That's all I had to say about food and how to cook on the Appalachian Trail. Tune in next time for more information and tips and tricks that I've learned on my food life.